Hello, in this video, I will be showing the upgrade ability and upgrade potential of the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. This is the version with the Ryzen 4500U processor. I'm going to uh, lock the focus on the uh, computer screen. When you turn it around, uh, one thing I immediately like is that it's all uh, Phillips screws. So we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten Phillips screws, and then we can get the back off. As I've said, I love it when manufacturers use standard parts. And Phillips screws are definitely standard. I should have grabbed a bigger screwdriver that I can grab a bit more torque on, but this will have to do for now. It's gonna hurt my fingers afterwards, but all right, we can take these all off. Looks like the ones in the middle are slightly longer, which is expect, which is expected. So we have taken the screws off. Let's see if it's as easy as lifting, lifting the. Let's see if it's as easy as lifting this uh, cover off. So on the ThinkPads, the easiest way to do this was from the back. I do not think that is the case for this particular model. Um, the easiest way I found to take this apart is just pry it from the edge here. And bingo, the cover comes off. So if we look here, we can see a couple things. The first thing is that this is a removable Wi-Fi cover. So this is an, probably an M.2 2240 E2 actually. So that's always useful. Presumably under here is the SOC. They've taken an interesting approach here where they're only using a heat pipe to bring the heat from the CPU to the fan. I would have expected there to be a little bit more. The entire front of the laptop is the battery. We've seen this in recent laptops where they've essentially been kind of flipped over. Old laptops used to always have the battery in the front, components in the, sorry, battery in the back. You know, they would have your hump to a nine cell or your regular six cell and other stuff would go in the back. Uh, so in the front, this laptop has it flipped over. So the battery is in the front, in the back. This looks like some soldered DRAM that is most definitely soldered DRAM back there. And here looks like we have our WD SN530. And uh, as a bonus, it looks like there's a mounting point so that you can um, you can uh, add a 2280 SSD instead of the 22, whatever this is, 2230, whatever. So instead of this, if you wanted to attach a bigger uh, SSD, you could do so. You would just have to plug it in uh, and then screw it in here instead of screwing it in back over here. So that's useful to see as well. What I don't see is the inclusion of a DRAM slot. So according to Lenovo's product prefer, uh, page, this computer should have four gigs attached and four gigs removable. That being said, I do not see where the four removable gigs are. Oh, I found it. We do have four gigs of removable RAM. Here they are. They have given us a Samsung 3200. That is very nice to see, um, especially because fourth gen Ryzen really likes fast memory. So for the people that bought this laptop and left a review saying the RAM isn't upgradable, it is. You just have to take this cover off. If you take this cover off, you can see that we got, this is just a removable SODIMM four gigabyte memory stick. Um, I mean, personally, I would have preferred if they gave 8 gigs on the laptop and I could add another 8 gig stick to get 16 gigs. Because right now, if I put an 8 gig DIMM, we're going to end up with 12. If I put a 16 gig DIMM, we're going to end up with 20. I would have really liked it to be matched, but unfortunately, I see why they've done this. I think 95% of the people buying this laptop are not going to be upgrading the RAM. And in that case, having dual channel memory with 4 gigs, 4 gigs, Will actually give you a much better performance boost than having one channel be eight gigs and the second channel be empty. So I can see why they've gone for this approach. For most people, I think it's actually a better approach. It will give them higher performance to be running in dual channel. Um, it, I just wish though for upgradability that they have given that they had soldered eight gigs so I could have chucked another eight gigs in. Now, it looks like they could have easily made both of these slots removable if I'm to be honest. Um, I don't see anything on over here on the PCB. It looks empty. So I think if they wanted to, especially because, you know, 
there's nothing in the bottom of a DRAM slot. Uh, I absolutely think that they could have put a second SOTUM slot, so they could have had two removable slots, which I would have preferred. Um, I think this is a cost-cutting measure, but you know what? I cannot see this about all laptops. At least we have upgradable RAM up to, uh, so 20 gigs, or you can even go, uh, I would guess, 36 gigs if you put a 32 gig DIMM and then the 4 gigs. So I guess over here is the uh, RAM that Lenovo has included out of the box. This is some um, pretty good Samsung. It's Samsung uh, 3200. So when you first open this laptop, you might think that the RAM is not upgradable. If you're not, it's because I might insert this back in. There is this uh, metal cover over it. Um, you can notice that over here on this side of the board, uh, let me zoom in just a bit. Here we have our four gigs of RAM that is built into the laptop. And over here we have a cover that's covering the DRAM slot. Now, clearly this could have been a slot as well, but yeah, if you take this off, pop this cover right off. You can see the second slot right here. Four gigs, four gigs, adds up to eight. Um, I will be swapping this four gig dim for an eight gig dim, and that way you can get four plus eight equals 12 gigs. Now, overall, as I said, I think the upgradability of this is fine for a laptop of this caliber. Um, the battery is removable. Um, so, I mean, first of all, we can take the back cover off. That's always a huge win for laptops. Can't it, you sometimes take it for granted after Apple's nonsense. Um, I don't see any proprietary chips or anything that would make it hard to swap most of what you can replace out. So battery is fully replaceable. Um, next up, the Wi-Fi. So this is an... We'll have to boot the windows to see what type of Wi-Fi this is. Probably since this is a not top tier laptop, it's a real tech chip. I doubt it's an Intel one. But the good news is this is just a regular M.2 slot. So. Uh, and it's actually one of the uh, key M.2 slots because it needs both PCIe for Wi-Fi and USB for Bluetooth. So you can easily uh, pop this out and uh, buy an Intel AX200 on Amazon or eBay. Um, unscrew this right here, uh, pop the AX200 in, plug it in, and boom, you got um, MU MIMO Wi-Fi. So that's really easy to, sw uh, to switch. That's always good to see. Down here, they have provided a thermal pad is the... WD SN530 and um, this is a 256 gigabyte RAM SSD. Sorry, it's a 256 gig RAM SSD. Um, and um, since they've provided a second screw hole over here for up, to, uh, this one lines up perfectly with an 2280 SSD. So that means that you can put an up to a two, three, like two terabyte M.2 SSD in this without any problems. I don't see any SATA storage. Uh, which is to be expected. I believe one of the product pages mentioned that you could get this with a one terabyte hard drive. I don't know where that would go. Um, presumably here or somewhere, but honestly, uh, you probably don't want that anyway. Um, I know the ThinkPad that I use has a SATA slot that I use for a second SSD, but the one M.2 is definitely going to be more than enough for most people. And the fact that you can take this out and put a 2280 uh, M.2 SSD, I, I mentioned the 2280 is being important because it's just a lot more common to find uh, SSDs in the 2280 form factor instead of the whatever this is. Um, so it's always great when, you know, manufacturers leave an option. And in this case, they have. So uh, I'm very happy that you can put, upgrade the SSD later on if this fills up. It's always, that's a great idea option as well. Um, honestly, it looks like a lot of the other chips are covered in uh, thermal pads. So down here, we have some power delivery, it looks like. Um, I find it slightly interesting, the approach they've gone for. So the CPU is clearly underneath here, and they've just taken a single um, fan, a uh, single heat pipe, I mean, it's a wide heat pipe, mind you. It's a lot wider than your average heat pipe. And um, they're just running the blower fan over here. And honestly, the heatsink on it's pretty tiny. You can see the heatsink is just here to here. That's it. That's your heatsink. This entire unit here is the fan. You got this tiny heatsink. So uh, the fan is 100% going to be ramping up pretty often on this unit. 
And I would hope that it doesn't thermal throttle because there really isn't a lot of thermal mass. Usually, usually the bigger the heatsink you can put, the more thermal mass you have. I don't see why this couldn't have been pushed slightly back and you could have done. I mean, yeah, they definitely could have fit in a bigger heatsink if they wanted to. Honestly, it's probably fine though. Um, and yeah, battery here, this ribbon cable, this is the trackpad, trackpad's under here. I like that the uh, keyboard is metal, so hopefully that I think that'll provide some passive cooling and also I don't like it when keyboards get too hot. But yep, you can see the uh, daughter board on this side for the headphone jack and SD card reader, that's it. Um, presumably this is wired for USB uh, and on this side we have everything else. BIOS batteries over here if you need to replace it. Yeah. Not the most upgradable laptop I've seen. Um, the ThinkPad E495 that I'm using has two DIMM slots, both the DIMM slots available. So I can always upgrade 8.8, uh, which is what I have now, or I can put 16.16 or even 32.32 to get up to 64 gigs of RAM. Unfortunately, in this case, that's not going to be possible because the 4 gigs is always soldered on. But as I said, I think for 95%, for the vast majority of people having that are not going to upgrade the RAM, having 4 gigs, 4 gigs in dual channel uh, will give you higher performance and will be more worthwhile as opposed to just having um, 8 gigs over here and then the ability to put like 32 more. But then most people aren't going to take advantage of that, so it'll just be slowing them down. Um, I know that's one thing that LTT always harks on pre-built manufacturers for if they only wire up, uh, use one um, one of the memory slots. That's about it. Looks like the rest of here is just for passive cooling. On the back cover... I have the screws in here, so I'll be careful. Looks like there's a bit of metal to try to provide some passive cooling. And interestingly, there's copper where the uh, M.2 SSD goes. So if you do decide to put in a higher performance SSD, something like, I mean, I don't know if you would be able to put an SN815 like here. I don't, I do not know what the power delivery on this is. Um, the SN, the, the, the 500 series, the WD Blue is usually only go up to about 5 watts, whereas some of the higher performance ones with DRAM caches can use like 10 watts. So um, I think that might have been the reason they've gone for this. But overall, I think it's a pretty flexible um, computer. Uh, I think the keyboard's a bit mushy, and I think the display could have been slightly better if it weren't a TN panel. I don't have any complaints, though. I think this is just to protect the RAM from... I don't even know what, but... Presumably, maybe for against static shocks. There's these little uh, teeth here um, that are kind of like Y-shaped. It just goes in between those, wedge it in, and as you notice, it's not closed. Interestingly, they've provided the same type of mount here, but I do not see a cover for it. And I don't know where that would be. I am looking at the, maybe it would be in this. Yeah, I don't see particularly clear evidence on this panel either. But that is the internals of the laptop. Very easily accessible, just 10 Phillips screws and you're in. Um, and um, that concludes this video on the And uh, with that, I would like to conclude this video on upgrading and the upgradability of the Lenovo IdeaPad 3, the uh, 2021 version with the Ryzen 4500U processor. Um, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something from this. Hopefully you found this interesting. Maybe it'll be useful for you to upgrade your laptops. If, uh, if, if you have any friends that would like to do a similar upgrade, I guess feel free to share this video to them. Thank you for watching and have a great day.